Hello, good morning, good morning everyone, good, uh, good Saturday. Um, allora, I am quite excited for today because um, as you know we are studying the Great Pyramid, we started like two months ago and we um, basically covered, uh, we, are, we, we are studying the Great Pyramid from the exploration's point of view and from the historical reports points of view and accounts and people that went there, what they discovered, what did they find, how was the pyramid looking, like all of that. So if you didn't check yet out the previous videos, go for it. Uh, there, I mean, I, I've done my best job here. Sometimes I find books of like 400 pages and 500 pages. And to be honest, like I don't really read every single page of like, like it's otherwise it would really take me 10 years to study the Great Pyramid. So, what I do, it's, uh, I mean, the best I can, okay? So, um, so, so far, if you, if you didn't, like, uh, check the videos before uh, of today, check them out, really. Because today, it's really a milestone. Uh, today, it's the episode on Giovanni Battista Caviglia. Uh, you will, I mean, if you're not into pyramids, you don't, you don't, you don't know much. Uh, who, who, the, who the hell is <laughs> Caviglia? I will tell you everything about this guy and what he did uh, for 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 um, Egyptology and archaeology. Um, but yeah, play, please make sure you you watch the, the previous videos because we really covered uh, already like uh, sort of four thousand years of um, archaeology <laughs> on the Great Pyramid. Um, yeah, so remember always like if you like the video to like the video and please like why not subscribing like uh, why not like <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out with uh, with this. I really would like to achieve a thousand uh, subscribers soon. So okay, let's go into the topic. It's already two minutes and I'm just talking. This is Giovanni Battista Caviglia and this drawing was drawn by Henry Salt himself. Uh, you know Henry Salt was the British consul of of uh, consul consul of uh, of Egypt back in the early 1800s, and um, so basically um, this guy was an Italian merchant, like a guy that was you know selling and buying stuff in the sea, uh, going from port to port. Uh, he was from Genova. He was like, you know, trading stuff in the Mediterranean and then at some point he left everything and just went to Egypt to dedicate uh, his life to explorations and things like that. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's something that reminds me a little bit about Belzoni because Belzoni also did a similar choice, like he left everything and came to Egypt to dedicate his life to explore. Now they both, funny thing, they both was were working for, for Harry Salt and I guess Caviglia was not um, like ego, like too much egocentric because then Belzoni was, he, he really complained about Harry Salt being like the boss. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an old story, so I'm not going to tell the whole story. So we are focusing on Caviglia today. Um, so, yeah, so he worked for Henry Salt and we know from 1816 and 1817. And then he was he he would later work also for Howard Weiss and John Perry, John Shaw Perry, but very 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 briefly uh, because they fight it. <laughs> I mean I'm gonna tell you later. Um, so what did this guy do? So he was the first one to excavate the Sphinx uh, around the Sphinx. So this is actually a drawing from Howard Weiss uh, in the book Operations uh, carried out in Giza, 1837. And yeah, so he excavated these things, and what, it doesn't mean like he, he took the sand away, he liberated the things basically. And it was not done uh, like the last time somebody did it was the time of Marco Aurelius, <laughs> so it's like 2000 years. And yeah, he discovered the stele of Tutmosi the fourth, and yeah, the ever, like it's a big topic, this thing, so it's, we're not gonna talk about the things today. But yeah, he was the first one who had to, in the modern times to actually liberate the Sphinx. He just happened not to become king of Egypt <laughs> because the last one who did became <laughs> king of Egypt, like Tutmosis the first. Um, so this is the stele that he found. It's, a, it's like a, it's a small depiction of, of the stele. Okay, so he also in uh, Saqqara uh, he also found this huge 
statue of Ramses the Second. I don't know how tall it is, like what, 24 meters? Like, I don't know how tall it is, but yeah, it's huge. And it was, this statue was always laid uh, on, uh, on his back, uh, on its back in Saqqara. They, they made a, a, a room in the Museum of Saqqara big enough just for this statue. And now they finally put it in uh, the Great Egyptian Museum, as you can see. So, um, so yeah, uh, whenever you go to Egypt, uh, you go to check the Great Egyptian Museum. This is the first statue you're going to see when you enter in the, in the hall. Um, Caviglia. So, let's go to the topic of the Great Pyramid, right? So, what did he do uh, in, the, in the Great Pyramid? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. This is the beginning. Like, the 18th century is full of discoveries in the Great Pyramid. So, this is the very first section. Um, that was ever done uh, in the pyramid and uh, as you can see the, the what we know from the modern times subterranean chamber was not was not ex excavated well shaft apparently was not I mean was still filled uh, no shafts in the Queen's chamber no no relieving chambers and etc then uh, Desmaillet also did like this drawing and he sp like represented the shafts in the King uh, chamber as openings, not as sh not as shafts, just as little holes. Um, then the description of the, the, the Napoleon description of Egypt. Uh, this is the where the first time where the Davison's chamber is depicted, represented, and this is the section drawn by Howard Weiss. And this is this in in, in like in in this drawing you have the discoveries of. Um, of Caviglia as well, okay. So let's go for for this. So let's make the screen a little bit bigger like this, so then we are, it's easier for me. Okay. Alright, the drawing is not the quality of the drawing is not amazing because you know, but I'm gonna tell you everything. So he Caviglia cleaned cleared the well shaft. Now we know the well shaft was already explored in 1565 by a guy called Christoph Führer. Uh, was probably a German, I guess. And um, so, but imagine the task that would be to clean the whole well shaft down. It, like the the lack of air, like there is like it's it's an adventure in itself. Okay, with we you know without electricity, without like it's it's, it's a nightmare. Uh, so he cleared it, and uh, it, well, it, he accidentally actually found out that. Um, uh, because he was using sulfur, uh, so he found out that the well shaft was connected to the descending passage. And yeah, you have like this opening here. This is where the well shaft uh, cross with the descending passage. Um, he also cleared the descending passage because... He, so this is the first time actually in the modern times that we have the modern... the, the, the descending passage cleaned. So people can just come and see the subterranean chamber where he will find um, Roman graffiti. Uh, I haven't found much information about this, but yeah, we will probably talk about it uh, in the next video uh, about Howard, we Howard Weiss, okay? Um, so yeah, so imagine that this like this guy was, why, why, why was he so obsessed of excavating the well shaft? Because as far as, as far as they knew, Khufu's chamber would have been in the subterranean chamber because of, from the Rodotus uh, account, right? So they made everything possible to just let's clean the well shaft and see this this chamber. Let's see what we find. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that was uh, was the idea. Um, so the fact that the Roman graffiti was found in the subterranean chambers means that the subterranean chambers was already uh, visited in the Roman times, uh, obviously. So we haven't found any other graffiti in the upper chambers. So it's kind of like the question is, was the well shaft opened? Uh, were the Romans you know, able to climb up and go to the upper systems? Mm, I don't think so. We don't have any report of that. So um, at some point the well shaft was opened. Um, Cavilla thinks that the well shaft was a workman endeavor 
So because uh, as you as you might know, this this ascending corridor is plugged here with granite blocks. So th the idea is that the workmen will drop the blocks, close this, and then they needed a way out. So the way out will be just excavating through the whole thing and get out through the descending passage. Now I don't think that's the case. Uh, it will. It's just no. I don't think it's a logical thing to do. You just go away, and you and you turn down turn turn down the system, and you can plug the granite blocks without having to excavate a workman tunnel. So uh, this well shaft for me personally is still a bit of a mystery. Uh, I still have to study a lot, but yeah, I don't agree with what the Cavillier's conclusion. Um, so uh, let's go into way more interesting stuff now. So. Caviglia, uh, he is responsible for blasting <laughs> as much as he could uh, the pyramid. Uh, but to be fair, like that was that was the way <laughs> in, of archaeology back then. So I'm not like you know, like if we were doing today, we would feel bad because today, like we have other systems. But back then, like I yeah, I mean yeah, they damaged the pyramid, but. How much we gained from those uh, blasted, like dynamite, you know, uh, you know, uh, operations. So the he um, blasted his way through this portcullis, okay, from the grand ga f between the grand gallery and the king's chamber. He, um, you know, excavated that part and um, reached the, um, the 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 shaft, the north shaft of the king's chamber. He didn't find anything, uh, but that is important because that's why now we have a system of ventilation, and also that's where Gantenbrick in the 1990s would put the robots to explore the north shaft. So you know, quite of an important <laughs> operation. Now, whether or not Caviglia was responsible for the main killer tunnel uh, in the north in the north face. Uh, uh, we don't know. Um, ancient architects have done a great video about it, and lines in the sand as well. They explore way more in detail the story, um, so I'm not gonna, you know, add, I don't have anything to add. Uh, so if you want to check that out, you can check in those channels. So um, yeah, the main theory is that he was not probably was not responsible for the main killer tunnel. And then, um, I mean, then he, as far as I understood, he uh, tried uh, to to explore the south side of Davison's chamber, but he didn't find anything, okay? Because he was probably, I, I believe he was trying to reach the south uh, shaft of the king's chamber, the same way he did with the north. Um, but yeah, he did, just gave up at some point. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty much what 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 we got from Caviglia. Uh, it's it's super important, right? I mean, if this is the 18th century, uh, uh, this is just the beginning. <laughs> like uh, ne like Howard Weiss, le the section that I showed you is from Howard Weiss. So Caviglia didn't even know about the upper chambers, uh, uh, you know, the uh, above Davison's. So. Um, um, he suspected it, and he there is a there is a contentious debate because he's like, I told you, how wise uh, there there were chambers there. It's like he, claiming a little bit of a this, claiming a little bit of the discovery, but how wise was like, no, bro. <laughs> so so yeah, I, you, and as you can see, uh, you, as you saw in the in the drawings, they didn't even know about the uh, shafts of the Queen's Chamber. So I really wonder if if the, king, if the Queen's Chamber back then was was still plastered, because we know from, from a guy like a hundred years before that reported that the Queen's Chamber was plastered. And if it was plastered, it would be nice to, to have more information, but I didn't find... So... Um, um, so yeah, like yeah, it's it's. I think this is this is kind of everything I, I had to tell you about Caviglia in the Great Pyramid. Um, yeah, I mean uh, next week we will do Howard Howard Weiss and Joshua Pering, and they are responsible to find. Uh, I mean they're responsible so, for so many stuff, 
But a crazy thing will come after with Dixon. <laughs> Dixon. Dixon uh, and the relics, the famous relics of Dixon. The guy that, f the, the, the only, the guy that, f the only relics that were found in the pyramid were found by Dixon. Uh, I mean, this 18th century is a beauty of, uh, of, of a chapter for the Great Pyramid. Yes. It suffered some damages, we know. Archaeology back then was like that. It's like Indiana Jones, okay? Uh, we know. Uh, but without those, we will never know what we know now. Uh, so, yeah. I think it's part of the history. So, yeah. It's a little bit, I don't know. It's a topic to debate. But, yeah. I think I'm in peace with that. But, anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Make sure you subscribe, maybe. <laughs> okay. And like the video. And I see you soon. Uh, have a happy weekend. Thank you.